Always good fun down on a Pro World Challenge Absolutely. Grid. Seeing Jim Jordan there, the TC class manager here for Pro World Challenge, giving our commands today. This field springing to life, two different classes. We've talked a little bit about the starting lineup in Turing Car A, Jeff. Uh, Turing Car B, front row, swept by the Chevrolet Sonics from Tech Sport Racing, Kanan O'Connell and P.J. Gronke. Yeah, good job for those teams there. Uh, doing a good job. Kanan O'Connell really trying to recover here in the points to see if he can move back up. And the field now underway. Our Cadillac ATSV safety car leading the field out. Again, led once again by Elevan Goulart and Matt Fostad. Now let's take a look at our uh, Pirelli keys to the race. And the first one is these drivers have had to, one, survive that first race because we're doing two in one day. It's a quick turnaround. It is. You got the teams that come in here first thing in the morning. They get those cars set up. They go out and race. Any damage, or as the great Calvin Fish would say, argy bargy mm -hmm. with these two teams. They got a lot of damage to fix. Get those cars back underway and get ready to race here. Now, Matt Fosnett starts second in this race, but uh, he had an issue after the race unfolded for race one earlier today. Yeah, seeing that Fastnot had that penalty with the contact that he made with Paul Whiting, they said it was avoidable contact. They issued him a drive through penalty, but they reviewed it post-race. Therefore, they attached the 29 seconds to his overall finish position. That moves him back, but he's still able to keep his qualifying time because it was a race penalty, not a qualifying penalty. Right, and we sort of cheated it a little bit. We've already talked about that great front row sweep and Turing Car B for Tech Sport Racing. And Kanan O'Connell, boy, I'll tell you what a season he is having. And P.J. Gronke finding it in that race in terms of speed. So, looking forward to this one getting going. And, of course, it is the second of a doubleheader weekend. So, when we come back, standing start here at Lime Rock Park. Stay with us. We're TSL-Timing.com. Once again, everybody, just to let you know, this is the last race of the weekend, but since it's the second one, it follows the format in terms of our coverage here on the web stream. Which will be eavesdropping as we're building our CBS Sports Network coverage. So you can expend moments when we're not going to be talking as we're going to be chatting with our producers and the like. So be ready for that as we're getting ready for the start here. There's two beautiful SAC Global MX-5 Cup cars in front. And then Tomo, Mr. O'Gorman, getting ready to go here in that Shea Racing, Red Life Honda right there. Third place qualifying speed. Let's see what he's able to do in that race. I was impressed as that race unfolded this morning that he was able to maintain that. Again, front drive, a lot of load on that left front. And he really, really did a nice job of preserving that. So we're going to lay out. We're going to be coming back with our CBS Sports Network coverage here in very short order. And our Cadillac ATSV safety car bringing the field around to stage four, the standing start. There is our Cadillac medical, an official medical vehicle of this series, the Cadillac Escalade. Let's take a look at our quad box featuring the replay XD cameras. Just some exceptionally high quality video that it provides for us. And most of these cars carrying them, so this is just a sampling of what you're going to be able to see. And it is now the VP Racing Fuels acceleration zone that they're in. Now, for a standing start, obviously, uh, this is just the standing start. But if we have a restart, they get into that VP Racing Fuels acceleration zone. It is a crucial component of this track. So big thanks to VP Racing Fuels for help us recognize that as the race unfolds. Field is staging. And once again, if you look over at the top of that metal guardrail, those two black boxes, you watch for the red light to come on in the back of that. That indicates to the field as they've got a big red on the other side, that it is within five seconds of the start. We get the indication the field is clear and green. We are ready to go racing. There's a look back at the Turing Car B category. You see the officials saying, all right, everybody, got to clear you back off of this wall as a standing start for the 
Sixth round of this championship for the Touring Car A and Touring Car B about to unfold. And we're into the five second window. So watch for those lights to come on and we're gonna go racing here at Lime Rock Park for the last time on this Memorial Day weekend festival. As the Pro World Challenge comes, lights are on. We're ready to go racing. The revs are up. We're green. And a good start, a tremendous start from that second row. What a launch by Copeland. Yeah, Copeland got it off there. Eric Powell does the same thing, gets around Tom O'Gorman. That front-wheel drive Honda Civic SI just does not have the straight-line speed of the rear end wheel drive to be off to get off that line. Yeah, absolutely. And clearly, uh, you can see as well that uh, Copeland just read that to perfection, snuck around Fosnott, and has now moved up into second. Fosnott third, Copeland fourth, then O'Gorman. Yeah, fifth on the starting grid up to second place for Dean Copeland. Great run for him. Hello, Von Goulart. You don't want to let him get too far ahead. He got his teammate, Matthew Foss, not right behind him. He'll want to get around Copeland quick to see if he can start running down his teammate and also protect that lead for SAC Racing. Well, again, those crazy runs that they have. It looked for a minute like Foss now was going to try and stuff it down the similar livery car. Oh, and Paul Whiting. Oh, wow. This morning he had a problem where he was ushered off the track. Not sure what happened there, but... Pretty significant damage at this point. A nice job by him to just get it moved across. They're not using that climbing S, so it's an area that he can go park that car and assess the damage. Yeah, heavy damage in the front and the back of his car. I see some smoke coming out of the back of one of the cars. I'm not sure who that was from. It could be a tire rub from I think it's the damage. Or it looks like the 23 of Eric Powell smoking out of the back of that Mazda MX-5. Not sure what that is, but oh, if that car can last this whole race or not, right here at the beginning, it's yeah. going to be tough. Certainly keep an eye on that. Seems to have dissipated at this stage. First, I thought it might just be some tire rub. So we'll see how that plays out. Right behind him is the number 94 now of O'Gorman. He is really hounding Powell. And, uh, you know, racers, they're relentless. They're mean-spirited guys. And they see a car smoking. There's zero sympathy. All that is is opportunity, and O'Gorman's now just going to push. Yeah, he's going to be right there on the back. And that's just a little plastic fender liner there on the exit. And this should be, yeah, just like that gets blown over. And you see it looks like P.J. Gronke able to get around his teammate, Johnny O'Connell, there at the start for the TCB lead. Is Eric Laporte in that he, uh, Honda Civic had the damage at the start of race number one. The team did a good job getting him back underway. He's just trying to get the feel for the car again and uh, needs to stay out of the leaders here in TCB. <laughs> I think Kane will take it as a great compliment. You called him Johnny. That's, that's, true. A, that's yeah. a pretty fair comparison right it there, is. isn't it? Drives just like his dad there, but Kanan doing a great job here at the Texport Racing Team 1-2. Travis Wache had a good run down the straightaway. P.J. Gronke and Kanan O'Connell sort of slammed the door on him. Don't want to let him get around the two teammates. This is where I really hope the stewards get on the radio to the number 50 car and go, if you can't find a little bit more speed, pull over and let these guys through. This is a lead battle in class. We don't want uh, things to be too affected here. And Laporte obviously just having some sort of an issue. You just can't dial up the speed. We know that car and he is capable of here. And uh, so right now, Gronke, Kanan O'Connell, Washe, and Pipeball coming up. And ooh, look at this move here. The number 73 on the move of Daniel Moan. And look there. That is the number 22. Anderson having a the uh, Optima Battery's best standing start in this one. So uh, a good launch there. And, of course, that's that Scion FRS that Kevin is driving. And uh, it's made appearances in this championship, but he's really trying to take that development to the next level, isn't he? He really has got a lot of support from 86racing.com. Five cars strong here for Tech Sport Racing. Got one, one of his teammates right there in front of him, Steve Streamer, doing a great job as well in here in his Pearly World Challenge weekend debut. But the battle's still on as it looks like uh, Tom O'Gorman got around Eric Powell for fourth, and now to see if uh, Dean Copeland once again was up there in second place. Fosnott got around him and pulled away, so Dean Copeland just missing it a little bit here at Lime Rock Park, starting to fall back in the clutches of Tom O'Gorman and Eric Powell. And just something a little off, it seems, possibly, in the setup of that car. And O'Gorman, as you said, now glued to his rear bumper as they go through the infamous diving turn here at Lime Rock. And O'Gorman got a nice little run and immediately popped to the inside here. And Powell referenced him and said, I think I need to go with Tomo here. Looks like Tomo's going to nose ahead. But Copeland taking it in real deep into the first turn here. And if he can stay put, Jeff, that might work. Yeah, and I think you see Eric go back to the inside because that's going to hang out Tom O'Gorman because uh, yeah. Copeland's going to stick it right to the inside. You see that. There's Eric Powell just turns the wheel down there, doesn't quite have the speed to get on the inside of the Civic. 
And Tom O'Gorman stuffs it back Ooh. to the inside, right over the curb, bouncing on the end. And Dean Copeland doing a great job, giving him enough room. But you saw the momentum loss there as Eric Powell is going to be the benefactor here amongst those two guys in front of him. Oh, what does O'Gorman do? He's got it into it, floats it wide, but is able to make it work. And I think Powell coming up the inside of Copeland. Copeland couldn't get it turned the way he wanted to, and that's what gifted it a little bit to O'Gorman after a great move into the uh, uphill. Yeah, just a little momentum loss there on the uphill. With these cars, all about a momentum. It's like a, a, a rock on the end of a string. It keeps spinning around. It gets faster and faster. Well, and O'Gorman getting that rock a little bit further placed ahead of the rest of the field, except for Element Goulart and Matt Fosnott, who have now opened that margin up over this battle for third to over seven seconds. We'll see if they can close it up when we come back to Lime Rock. Tom O'Gorman almost bought the farm there down in turn number one, got way to the edge, yep. super loose. Looked like he was trying to dime in the corner. Maybe, uh, yeah, I meant to do that. But how about Travis Washe and Jake Peipel wow. got around? What a big change here in our TCB field as Kanan O'Connell back to third and P.J. Gronke to fourth as Jake Peipel passing uh, Washe here for the lead. Yeah, and you just hope that it wasn't a matter of uh, Laporte bottling them up and letting these guys through here. But Peipel, you know, again, as I said, it doesn't matter what caused the opportunity for you here. You're going to jump on it if you can. And uh, Washe... Had a good run, picked up that lead, and then Pipel was just able to, he had a tremendous run down the downhill, was able to pull out and get that pass done fairly early. Well, I've said it before, the traffic can give it, and the traffic can take it away, just yeah. like that. And unfortunately, uh, like I said, no no fault alone of Eric Laporte. He's trying his hardest yep. to stay up to speed, had damage before, get that car underway. And yep. you got to help try to build your confidence up a little bit here. Unfortunately, just got tangled up with those TCB leaders. And good job from Pipel, Washe. Kanan O'Connell, P.J. Gronke, top five here in TCB with Taylor Handwork just nipping on the back heels of P.J. Gronke now. And O'Connell, as you said, yeah, getting around uh, Gronke as well. As this field, that lead group in the uh, Touring Car B cars, and what a, I mean, the proverbial blanket covering the top five in this class right now. Wache looks to the inside of Pipel as we head down into Big Bend. Pipel is going to float that speed around the outside. Gave Wache plenty of room if he could make it work. But Pipel, that's going to really put him in a good position here into the left-hander. Yeah, Washe had no choice but to go oh, to the outside there. And I knew O'Connell was going to pounce there. It goes to the inside. That's really going to hurt Washe. If you're going to make a move to the inside and hold it there, you got to make sure you can hold it all the way around like Washe does and see how it holds him up now as P.J. Gronke getting him over his teammate, Kanan O'Connell. Yeah, wow, that was pretty interesting as Washe kind of washed out just a little bit, got ended up right in front of O'Connell. And Gronke was able to just slice through underneath. This is what we're used to seeing in Turing Car B, cut and thrust, and I think finally maybe the back end of that number 23 of uh, Powell giving it up just a little bit here. A lot of smoke has been emanating uh, from that. You think maybe differential or something. Yeah, I hope uh, probably rare is what it, the, yep. we were getting reports from. They were watching him, and I don't know what happened there, if he just had a spin or some contact or his wall, and uh, we'll have to get find out from race control what happened there with 23. Jake Pipel leading in Turing Car B here at Lime Rock Park, feeding it in to Big Ben. However, that is by no means any kind of a comfortable margin here as the next three cars are just glued together in that queue and not far behind them. Fifth in Turing Car B right now is Taylor Handwork in the 77 Indian Summer Racing Mini Cooper. It's that close. Normal in touring car B racing, just yeah. great stuff. Business as usual here, of course. <laughs> exactly. First through fifth, just separated by less than a second. Of course, PJ Gronke during that break was able to get around his teammate Kanan O'Connell for third. And PJ looks in attack mode here as he's on the backside of Travis Wache. Now Jake Pipel pulling away a little bit. Now the strategy is going to play here. Does PJ want to try to get around Wache yep. and run down Pipel, or should he stay on the Whoa. back of Wache? As Pipel runs a little wide, they're going to lose his momentum. That is going to answer that question now as Wache gets around Pipel and wow, big heads up driving by PJ Gronk. You got to get all over the binders, and I think that's going to kill his momentum oh, coming down did. the straightaway here. Yep, O'Connell is going to get the run, I think, and certainly Taylor Handwork in that uh, second Indian Summer Mini Cooper slices by both of them as they had to check up. It goes from fifth to third. That's just how quick things can change in a class that is pure momentum, as you pointed out earlier, Jeff. Uh, that's what these cars are absolutely thriving on. And for P.J. Gronke, I mean, you know, for a moment they're thinking, I got, I might have a shot at the lead here, and suddenly he's fourth. 
Well, Jasper Drangler just drives off the course back there in turn number one. Saw a big cloud of smoke in his Honda Fit side by side, but we're still watching this battle for second or for the lead actually in TCB, first through fifth here. And now the two teammates of PJ Gronke, Kanan O'Connell, the best thing they can do is team up now and see if they can draft by Taylor and try to catch back up to that lead group. TC A traffic hasn't come through yet, but there he is, Elevon Goulart. Yep, and that can certainly jumble things up because it depends on when Elevon makes the move and if he parks any of these cars as he comes through. And you can see the blue flags flying, letting everybody know here they come. And Goular, he understands. He's he's driven a multi-class racing and is a touring car A driver, usually running with the touring cars. He gets this picture here. He doesn't want to affect these guys, but he certainly also wants to use it as any opportunity to build a margin over Matt Fosnott and Tom O'Gorman, and he's done that. Yeah, Fosnott's going to catch all these guys down there in turn three and four. And then on to no name is Elevon Gurler just working his hardest here to try to go around the outside. Doesn't want to lose any momentum, but doesn't want to affect this race like you said, Greg. He's yep. a very gentleman on that. Gets around Washe, good. Washe still able to make his corner and keep the lead over Jake Peifel. Looked like Washe, the back of that Mini Cooper, may have stepped out just a little bit as he was trying to give a little bit of extra room as Goulart came through, and it may have hurt his momentum just a little bit. Not enough for Peifel to do much with it. Matt Fosnott now trying to knife through this group. And if, if he makes this move here, oh, that's really going to hold up Heupel here and give an opportunity to Travis Wache to have about as big a margin as you can get in Turing Car B. Well, you got Taylor Handwork, uh, another mini from Indian Summer Racing, trying to see if he can get around Jake Heupel and see if we can have uh, the Indian Summer Racing team 1-2. But Matthew Fosnott's doing that for SAC Racing right now with Goulart uh, leading and Fosnott there in second. And handwork under attack from those two Chevy Sonics from Texport, but is able to hang on. Gronke just leading teammate Kane and O'Connell as they work through Big Bend and now up into the left-hander. Look at the scoring monitor here. Eric Powell still in fourth place. Yeah. Not sure what the problem was. He's about 10 seconds behind uh, Tom O'Gorman, however, so lost a lot of time there. So not sure what happened once again down there in turn number one. But Tom O'Gorman sitting in third place. Needs a good run here. There's a couple more cars driving off the course there. Eric Laporte still having problems uh, in his Honda Civic. I wonder if Powell just you know knows there's a problem. He may be hearing things in the back of that car and is just trying to baby it a little bit and bring it home. But still in all, he's able to hang on in front of Dean Copeland. So there's certainly still some pace in that Texport uh, MX-5. See a lot of those cars, you see them just tapping the brake light yep. there before they turn right to that uphill. Not a lot of runoff space there, and Eric Powell just wants to make sure you get those knockback on the brake pads, just get everything set again. And you saw Dean Copeland do the same exact thing. So good heads-up driver uh, from these two guys here. It's, uh, oh, Dean Copeland gets stuck behind Blake yep. Thompson. It's going to kill his momentum down the hill. And certainly, you know, tapping the brakes for the knockback, do they ever, you know, would you tap the brakes just to get the nose settled a little bit on those cars so you don't push, uh, you know, to get it settled until you hit the uh, the uphill where you then get the compression? Most of the time, if you're a left foot breaker, you'll do that. You'll get the weight yeah. transfer. Tom uh -oh. O'Gorman, of course, to the exit of turn number three there, the left-hander. He'll be able to get back underway. I think Eric Powell and Dean Copeland are just a little bit further back to see if we can get a replay here about what happened. He just got in there a little bit too deep, ran off the course, and... Now that it's dried out a little yep. bit, I think he got away with that. Had this been in the rain still, I don't think that would have been as nice as it was right now. Well, you know, that looks kind of like a replay we saw from the GTS race when Rodrigo Baptista in that same spot at the exact same moment. And he said he had a little problem, in his case, with the ABS. And he said, it got me off into the marbles, and then I just couldn't get it turned on the outside of that turn. And I wonder if O'Gorman floated out there just a little bit and then realized, uh-oh, it's getting a little tough to turn it here. He's going to be coming up on what is a fascinating battle in Turing Carby as Jake Peipel now tries to go to the lead on Travis Wache down into turn one. Looks like he's got it done. We've got to step away for just a minute, but we will be right back. We lay out on our CBS Sports Network show. Every time we come back to this group, you think, Jeff, somebody's going to get a little bit of a break here, and then you come back to it, and the blanket's covering them again. I know. Here it is, top five in TCB, all separated by that much right yeah. there. <laughs> when you look at first place, uh, Jake Peipel, the, it, you, it's point one, four, five, six, seven, point eight seconds separating the top five right now in TCB as they run on the track as uh, Tom O'Gorman's going to want to get by them as quickly as possible. He's got a big gap here, and it's really uh, – that's yeah, a bad place to try to go overtake somebody. You see how it's uh, split the two yep. teammates of Tech Sport Racing 
Looks like he'll clear P.J. Gronke pretty good down on the downhill and not kill his momentum too much, but just the way the lap traffic works here when you got faster cars getting to the slower cars, but the top three, nose to tail in TCB, a little bit of a gap back to fourth and fifth. Well, if anybody in this Touring Car A field has any sympathies for the Touring Car B guys, it's going to be Tom who's the defending Touring Car B champion and has had faster cars coming up through him all last year and affecting his race. So you can see he couldn't just wait but he certainly, oh, as Pipel drops those lefts, and suddenly he's got two Indian Summer Minis that side by in front of him here. But O'Gorman, he will at least understand and try not to affect that as much as he possibly can. Yeah, first to third right there yep. for Jake Pipel. I think he just lost his rhythm a little bit when Tom O'Gorman got around him down in turn number one, and he just took him through the exit of two to kind of get recovered, ran off the course, and uh, unfortunately lost the lead. We've talked about it. it's just a busy weekend of racing, and as as hard as the track and certainly the course marshals here try and get out and sweep these corners a little bit to get some of the marbles and clag as uh, as some have called it out of the way you can't get it everywhere and if you run wide and pick that junk up on your tires it can really cost you some momentum for a few corners until you can get that scrub clean again Eric Powell trying to see if he can still work his way running for Tom O'Gorman just in front of him Jake Pipel cuts back in behind the Miata trying to see if he can get a run down here into turn number one and Eric Powell able to clear both of our TCB leaders, but definitely not up to sound with the times there. His last lap was a 101.9, best lap at a one minute flat. So he's running about a second slower than he was before. And I think uh, he knows something's wrong, just trying to save the car now. We're gonna pause here and we'll be right back for CBS Sports. Elevin Goular continues to lead overall and in touring car A here at Lime Rock. Coming down the Sam Posey straight and heading in to Big Bend. I'll tell you the history, the names of the corners here that have lived in infamies for so many years. And Elevin Goular doing an absolutely superb run here. Uh, he had a shot at winning all four of the races he was in. Obviously had the incident in the second touring car race in the Lotus but leading away here, and I think he is fired up after that incident. He's just opening it up on this field. You say names, this is no name. Yep. So which one is it? Well, there are famous names and there are famous no, no names. names. So there. no names straight away there for yeah. Elevon Goulart. Up to the uphill, loses a little bit of traction there. You hear the revs come up, getting into the back of the lap traffic here at TCA now, but just a great job from that SCDA1, SAC Racing Mazda. Global MX-5 Cup cars, he clears Kevin Anderson, got Eric Laporte next. And he's got his teammate Matthew Foss now right behind him, who's actually lapping a little bit quicker now each lap as we go back to our TCB overall <laughs> leader, Travis Wache. He's got his teammate, Taylor Handwerk, right behind him. And uh, Dean Copeland in one of the Touring Car A Mazdas, the Global MX-5 cars. As he, nice job by Dean, able to get by them all and not really balking anybody here as they got in to the climbing, uh, or the uphill, the climbing uphill here. And uh, nice job for him to be able to work through here. And I mean, obviously up front, you, know, you look at a Goulart, but yeah, he's got a margin. When you've got more than a uh, two second margin in these combined races in touring car, there's less than a second covering the top five. They're gonna get some airtime as they should. It, look at this. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> bet right now on who we think is gonna no. win the TCB race because it could be a whole gamble. We can swap positions ten more times, not even halfway through this race yet, but the two teammates working together. You saw Taylor Handwork tuck up right on the backside of Travis Wache, get that draft down there, but you got the two teammates behind with Kanan O'Connell and PJ Gronke in tech sport is uh, Kanan O'Connell going down to the inside of Jake Pipel. Gronke not there to support his teammate, kind of had some trouble there on the left-hander. And Kanan, that didn't work, and he lost some momentum, as did Pipel, and suddenly Gronke, who dropped back by three car lengths, he's just all over him once again, and now he's going to try and get down the inside of Jake Pipel and does, so Pipel slips from third back to fifth. That's how quick things change in Touring Car B. Got to love this class. I just said I was never going to bet on who's yeah. going to do what. It uh, looks like uh, Brian Henderson there, the number 97 Copeland Motorsport Mazda MX-5 Global Cup car, starting to get his way through lap traffic. Jake Pipel's really falling off here. Yeah. Not sure what happened. As you start losing that draft of these top five, it's going to be hard to recover for Jake Pipel. You see Jake there. He was just quickly pointing, look, get by me. I want to draft you a little bit. Anything I can get to try and get back up to this group. And look at this, Kanan down to the inside now of Handwerk. 
And if he can uh, get handwork a little bit offline, you know Gronky's going to try and take advantage of it. Look at Travis Wache. Just that little bit of side-by-side, -side, Jeff. It's two car lengths for Travis. And Kanan O'Connell did a great job there. And P.J. Gronky played the teammate to perfection. Yeah. Gave Kanan just a quick little push there. Get him down to the inside of Taylor Handwerk. And now Kanan O'Connell's uh, battling for the lead in CCB. Oh, and here comes Henderson. And he almost, uh, for a moment, maybe chose poorly as he ducked to the inside. And I thought that uh, Gronky might be turning right across on him. And a uh, nice job by Brian to recognize that lift just a little bit. And now... He's able to come through and does it cleanly. But this has now put Wache and Kanan O'Connell about five lengths clear of the rest of this touring car B field. More than that now, Jeff. Yeah, Henderson got to the inside right there on the uphill and really balked P.J. Gronke a little bit. So now there's those three cars with uh, Taylor Handwerk and Jake Pipel can team up and see if they can run back those lead two again. And a good run continuing for Goular as uh, he just stretches that margin out. Got a couple of lap cars behind him here as they... Head up down the downhill and onto Sam Posey straight. And that car that just finished coming through the downhill, that's the car that's actually second overall in second in touring car. Matt Fosnott is uh, taking a look here at that margin. Five and a half seconds for Elevant Goulart. I think maybe that problem in the Lotus in the touring car race just really lit the fuse. And this he just knows this track so well and now knows what this Global MX-5 Cup car, where its strengths are on this track, and it's just putting it to absolute beautiful execution. Yeah, doing a good job. That whole SAC racing team doing a great job here. All their cars into the top 10 in TCA. But Elevon Goulart just putting on a driving clinic, as he would do at an SCDA event, which is a really cool event they have based out here at Lime Rock Park. Driving school, family environment, skid pads, autocross, team car control clinics. It's a great time to come out and check the schedule for that. But Matthew Fosnott, what can we say about this guy? Came in for the season first time last year as a rookie. Really studies, does a lot of track days, a lot of coaching. He's got an own private coach, Justin Pistatel, helping him out as well. And just to see him progress and go through here and able to battle with his teammate yep. for the overall lead. Set the fastest race lap last time by. I tell you, it's alphabet soup when you talk about Element Goulart in this category because Element is leading in TCA in the SAC, SCDA, <laughs> Mazda MX-5 Cup car. And it's the global one at that and doing a great job. And we'll be right back to see if he can hang on to it here when we return. All right, folks, back with you here on our global web stream here as we're in break for our CBS Sports Network show. And I'll tell you, Matt Fastnot now, he's coming up and he's catching this uh, couple of cars here. That's Steve Streamer and right behind him, uh, Daniel Moan, as uh, they are working through and he's uh, trying to get clear of them, get them a lap down so he can at least try and keep Elevan Goulart in sight. He's already almost ready to turn into Big Ben. Yeah, Levon Goulart, uh, just you see him hitting the brakes right there at the end of the bridge. But back to our TCB battle is Kanan O'Connell able to get around Travis Wache and P.J. Gronke back there in third as he's starting to work his way back up. I said Taylor Handwerk and Jake yep. Pipel were going to be able to work together and get them all back up there. They did just that. Well, it's interesting. Kanan was able to, on the at the exit of the diving turn, pinched it to the right. This is a few laps back. Got down to the inside of Travis Wache and somehow didn't scrub much speed in doing that and that's what gave him the lead and uh, normally you see that when you tighten that exit up on a, on a corner in these cars scrub that speed just a little bit you're just a sitting duck and somehow Kanan was able to make an adjustment jump and that's kind of what you have to do sometimes when you're racing here is all right what can i do to adjust my pattern almost to see if i can just get a little bit more rolling speed here yeah you don't want to get into a pattern where you're doing the same thing over and over again they're going to want to try different areas and do any um lines breaking areas as they're trying to get through the lap traffic Ostiato is making his debut here in Pro World Challenge in AC. Uh, SAC is uh Kanan O'Connell back to the inside of Washe getting report from race control though blocking for 2-5 moving response to Washe he's able to get back around as your leader Elvon Goulart now coming through the leaders in TCB he does not want to get tangled up in this scrap here for the lead. Oh and he gets parked he got absolutely parked but again Good understanding there of what's unfolding. Better to just lift a little bit and try and squeeze down the inside, have some sort of contact, and uh, take away a potential third win on the weekend. So doing a nice job there. And I think, you know, P.J. Gronke, he got the warning. I, I think his argument might be, well, I wasn't really. I was trying to get out of the way of the 70. And uh, 
But what this is really has, has uh, created here is a huge gap now for Kanan O'Connell. Yeah, Kanan's really pulling away. Elevon Guler at about a seven and a half point lead. And it looks like Kanan O'Connell's gonna have about a two and a half to three second lead when they cross the stripe. But PJ able to get around Travis Wache. So it's tech sport racing the way they started one, two with O'Connell leading. Take a quick pause. We'll be right back with you for our CBS Sports Club. Up and over the climbing turn, the number 70 SAC racing entry. Then as a global MX-5 car in the hands of local specialist, Elevon Goulart. Boy, is he putting on a clinic here today. Has the margin up to over five seconds in the generally incredibly close touring car A category as he leads it here over his teammate, Matt Fosnott, and then Tom O'Gorman in the Honda in third. Here's a look at a newcomer to the series, the 080. Nice to have him running in this championship as well, Richard Estacio. And uh, I think he's uh, he's finding, Jeff, that uh, this is pretty furious. Not that racing and club racing isn't, especially if you've got Spec Miata experience, but this might be on a different level. Looks like he might have a problem. Yeah, not sure. He's running seventh place overall right now in TCA, so having a great run, but yeah. does a lot of local club races here and uh, worked his way up through SCZA with that leader there, Elevon Goulart making his debut in pro racing with SAC Racing. This is what they do yep. <laughs> uh, with Adamir Fudamente, the team principal there at SAC Racing, bringing all these drivers here. Five car strongs, all Mazda MX-5s. I don't know what happened there, the 080. It definitely just suddenly slowed a little bit coming out of Big Ben, but right back on speed here now. So not exactly sure what's unfolding there. Then you take a look back. Here comes Matt Fosnott and then Kano O'Connell, leader in Touring Car B. And uh, he went from, you know, we went from a race, we had the top five in uh, Turing Car B covered by a blanket of less than a second to now some significant gaps, certainly from Kanan back to second place. His teammate, P.J. Gronke, will give you the official mark. 3.6 seconds, and that happened in a relatively short amount of time, Jeff. It did. It was instantly, and that's, why, that's how quick it happens. But he could lose that three-second gap yep. just like that, too, if some lap traffic hits him the wrong way. As you look back, as you see Daniel Moen trying to work his way through uh, P.J. Gronke, who's running second in TCB. Travis Wache back there in third, the local favorite. And Jake Peipel in fifth. Taylor Handwerk, the teammate to Wache in fourth. So if Taylor Handwerk can kind of kind of catch up to Wache there, they might put a run on P.J. Gronke in a second. But Kanan O'Connell is on a mission now. He's way out front. That was a smart, smart move there by P.J. He left it open to make sure that Daniel Moen could get through cleanly then just turned in to the climbing turn right behind him. Actually maybe got a little bit of a momentary toe up the hill, and it gave him just that little bit of room over Wache, who had to check up right there as the next car in the queue, the 21, a streamer, uh, was able to slot through. So now P.J. has himself a bit of breathing room. Well, he's got a bit of breathing room, but he's got no help. You yeah, see Wache and Hanwerk starting to get nose to tail, the two minis going to see if they can run him down. There's Tom O'Gorman. Eric Powell has been closing in on Tom O'Gorman. I've been watching the timing charts. It was 7.8 seconds. It's down to 4.1 seconds now. That lap, though, Tom O'Gorman got a message. He's about two tenths quicker than Eric Powell. Starting to turn it back up again, but he's got TCB lap traffic coming up. I wonder if Tomo now sitting, what, 14 seconds adrift to Fosnett just said, you know, I'm not in the hunt for the win today. And, and second without some sort of help. So I need to preserve particularly that left front just a little bit. So I'm gonna back it off a little bit. I'll give up a couple of seconds to Eric Powell so that I've got something if I need it at the end of the race. I mean, uh, Tom was a pretty savvy racer. He is, and Eric Powell though, he can uh, build his racecraft here, a long time competitor, the stunt driver there at Walt Disney World doing the lights, camera, action, motorsport show, which unfortunately got closed. Uh, knows how to drive a car up on two wheels and Yep. Definitely knows how to wheel one of these Mazda MX-5s from Tech Sport Racing doing a great job. But Tom O'Gorman looks like that's going to be the best gift he got here, able to clear that TCB traffic on the straightaway. Eric Powell, unfortunately, going to catch it 
down there in the quarters, but the gap to three and a half seconds now picked up another half second over Tom O'Gorman. If Eric Powell can work through this traffic good, we might have a battle for third here in TCA with only 11 minutes to go. It's interesting here with Powell, too. We saw that smoke, then it stops. Usually that's a bad sign. Uh, but uh, he certainly it hasn't seemed to have affected his pace much. Yeah, not too bad. He's going to get a couple guys here on no name straight away, and then I think down into the uphill and the diving turn, he'll be able to get around Jake Pipel right there. Didn't hurt too much momentum, and he's got the two teammates from Indian Summer Racing, Washe and Hanworth. Interesting to see just how difficult these two make it for Powell to get through here. The last thing they want is for him to come diving by them in this downhill turn. And he's going to try, and he got one of them. But he, that's definitely going to hurt handwork just a little bit. Yeah, and it hurt Powell, too. You saw yeah. him dive on the brakes and the yeah. nose of that Mazda MX-5 dip. We'll see the gap now. It should be, oh, 3.9. He lost four tenths of a second just that quick yeah. in one little section of track coming down the hill. That's how quick it happens. He's got P.J. Gronke next. It's just always amazing to me just the margins. You know, I mean, how quick is a tick on the clock? Literally a second right there. And, and uh, you know, a dip of the brake, and it's a half of that's gone. It's just, it just happens that quickly. And now up on the back of P.J. Gronke, who is continuing to hang on to second in the Touring Car B category. But Kanan O'Connell is now up the road to almost three seconds. So Gronke's taking a little bit of that back. He has, and that's all got to be to traffic. and doing a good job here for TCB. All right, so we'll see how this all settles out. We're going to step away for just a moment here at Lime Rock Park with the Touring Car A and Touring Car B race. It's a fair amount of racing yet to go. This isn't done yet. Back with you here on the web and... Uh, a little surprised that Powell has been able to last this long with that, you know, if, if it was smoke from the diff, you'd think there'd be a problem. So maybe it was just a little bit of tire rubber. Well, it is smoking just a little bit yep. there, and it's really when it gets really loaded on that left side. So I kind of think maybe perhaps just a little bit of damage to the rear of lip, rubbing something yep. on that Pirelli P0 tire, and it's sort of gone away. He hasn't lost much speed there. Still lapping at a minute flat .7 last time by. O'Gorman at a minute flat .5. Of course, he had the lap car here of Steven Streamer and Daniel Moan that O'Gorman just got around there down to the diving turn. We'll see what the gap is as they come down the hill. Is Moan able to get around the streamer? But Eric Powell right behind these two cars is uh, trying to get a draft going down the straightaway. But definitely in Powell. Uh, Powell is in. He's see him flashing the lights, trying yep. his hardest to let him know, hey, I'm coming, I'm coming. They're having their own well, little race. They're not just going to want to let him go. Yeah, Moan and Streamer have been swapping these positions here. They're basically for eight, they've virtually every lap, the other one's leading in that position. That's how fierce this little battle is. Yeah, what a great move by Eric Powell, though, as he got to the uh, outside of Streamer and then back to the inside of Moan. And Moan doesn't really want to give that position up, even though he's getting lapped. But Eric Powell still fighting the wheel. You see the white glove yep. there moving over that wheel as he's trying to run down Tom O'Gorman. The gap last time by 1.7 seconds. And I got to think maybe with those two team cars from Tech Sport Racing, he probably thought Streamer was coming back around him again. I mean, it's entirely possible. Or he knew if he lifted and let uh, the 23 of Powell through, that was going to give Streamer a run. Either way, he was uh, absolutely determined to not lose any of his momentum in his personal battle here. And, you know, if it, if it slowed up Powell a little bit, so be it at this stage. But now Powell has a clear view of the back of Tom O'Gorman here as they come down the front straight, the official margin as they clear it at this stage. 2.2 seconds as we have six, just under seven minutes left to go. Yeah, the lap before that, Eric Powell said his fastest lap of the race at a one minute point six two nine. He was the fastest car on the track by almost a second, but he lost that momentum there, dropped to a 101.2. So really that shows you how slow that can happen. But six seconds or six minutes to go here, and Eric Powell still trying to run down Tom McCormick. Up front, Goulart has opened that margin up now to 7.7 .7 seconds, although Fastnot still has the fast lap at this stage. And then some 14 seconds back to O'Gorman. So again, the battle really here is going to be for third in Touring Car A. O'Connell has a margin of three seconds to Gronke, who's got three seconds back to Wache. 
but he and his teammate are covered by last time by 87 one thousandths of a second so the Indian summer lads are having a good inter-team squabble here and Jake Pipel though has run them back down so this one's not done for that final spot on the Touring Car B podium yeah not at all and including that I think that battle for second is Wache is uh, 3.4 seconds behind Gronke and you see that there's Taylor Hanwer getting around his teammate Jake Pipel going to decide which teammate to go with here is the Indian Summer Cars. Down to the inside, Taylor Hanwer gets around his teammate and team principal there at Indian Summer Racing, Travis Wache. And Travis was thinking about the outside, but he also had to not open it up too much to let Jake Pipel through. And when he realized Pipel's nose was fast appearing, he just turned back in behind Taylor to help protect the lead. We're going to pause because we're going to be coming back to our final segment for CBS Sports in just a sec. Welcome back, everybody. A tremendous battle unfolding now for third in Turing Car B as Taylor Handwork has been able to slip around the number 30 of Travis Wache. He's taken that third spot away. Travis and another of the Indian Summer Coopers uh, sits in the fourth spot. Jake Pipel right now in the fifth spot. But the problem is these guys are racing for third as the two Texport Chevy Sonics have it covered right now. Kanan O'Connell about three seconds clear of teammate Gronke. Gronke clear by about three seconds of this battle. Well, I think Travis Wache is happy to have Taylor Handwerk up there in that podium spot, not doing the whole year, but he is running with Indian Summer Racing, sort of uh, the client there yep. for Travis Wache, but he's at his own expense. I don't think he wants to right. see that. Yeah, I'd like to be on the podium, but if I can't be, it's nice to have a client out there. Speaking of being on the podium, here's the number 94 of Tom O'Gorman, and uh, he is doing everything he can to try and hang on to a podium spot as uh, he comes by that's the Shea Racing Grid Life and of course Black Armor Helmets Honda Civic SI and uh, that margin we've been watching Eric Powell has closed and closed and closed and now Powell has actually lost three to four tenths here in this traffic and O'Gorman has himself a little breathing room as we're coming up on three and a half minutes to go in this one but up front Goulart and Fasnot are gone. Yeah they're doing a great job and speaking of great jobs Tom O'Gorman <laughs> fighting that Honda Civic SI a lot of support for this young man, the TCB leader there last year. Eric Powell to the inside, Woo! goes to the grass, <laughs> trying to get past lap traffic. He knows he has to get it done. There's only about three and a half minutes left. He's going to have any shot whatsoever. Cannot lose an ounce of ground here around this uh, beautiful road course here at Lime Rock Park. Well, at least now he's cleared that group, and the next car in front of him is O'Gorman. But the question is going to be, last time by, we talked about it, the margin was, I think, 2.6 seconds. Let's see what it is this time by dealing with that traffic. Gorman slices through. Here comes Powell. Yeah, lost another half second. It's 3.1 now for Powell, and uh, that's too much to be giving up here on these laps when you've got less than three minutes to go. Yeah, you can see Tom O'Gorman really working those Ibox springs on that car. Of course, big supporter of Shea Racing as Blake Thompson runs off the course back there in turn number one, just in the background, gets back underway. And they ISO Miata parts Mazda 2. But we talk about Tom O'Gorman really putting that Honda Civic to work. They got that car rebuilt in time to make the race here from earlier. See if we can get a look at what happened. Just a little bit loose. Gets a little sideways. Great save, though. Yeah, gets it back was. underway. Gathers it up. And, of course, the uh, you pointed it out. The grass a lot drier today. And uh, people able to save it and get back on course right now. Uh, O'Connell leads teammate Gronke now by 4.6 seconds. Gronke. Uh, almost three seconds clear of Taylor Handwork. So the, that battle really for third, fourth, fifth in Turing Car B and O'Gorman trying to uh, fend off uh, when he's got clear track. It certainly looks like Powell could close it up just a little bit. But the problem is, is in this track, even with a uh, two-class field like this, you're living in traffic. Yeah, 3.6 seconds as O'Gorman has spread that out. It was about four-tenths of a second a lap quicker last lap by and they were both in open air so no traffic going through there I can't blame that but the battle for third still on in TCB it is handwork as uh, Elevon Goulart coming around for not quite yet about two more laps to go yep. before he gets that white flag a minute and a half to go he's coming up on the back of that battle for third in Turing Carby but here's the impressive thing about what Elevon Goulart has done he has now lapped up through fifth overall 
That is a dominant display. It is. And you'll see that on these smaller bull ring circuits where, wow, he got through there. But if you're that much quicker on this mark, <laughs> this small of a course, yep. you can you can do that. And he might be able to, I don't think he'll be able to clip Eric Powell and O'Gorman as they're about 26 seconds yeah. back. And that's about a 57 second or 59 second lap around this place. Yep, pretty impressive. There's Kane and O'Connell. We're getting word that next time by start finish for Elevan Gular, they expect the white flag to come out. And O'Connell, there is the margin back to his teammate in second, P.J. Gronke, but the 24 at Bondurant Performance School on the side of that car for Kanan O'Connell as uh, he is on his way to perhaps yet another win this weekend uh, and this season as well. I mean, he's he's been pretty impressive in terms of his speed. And then there's that intense battle with Gular right in the middle of it. Delavon is just going to pop out, cleanly get by Taylor and work here. And Taylor... He's got himself a little margin, and Jake Pipel as the white flag flies, Jeff, around the last lap, and Pipel down underneath Travis Wache. Yeah, I think Wache got held up a little yep. bit. Momentum on the downhill by Elevon Goulart. That allowed Pipel to get around him. And uh, going to be devastating here. Travis Wache is going to be desperate to get back around him here at his home race. This is just such fun racing. And Elevon Goulart, you know, I think, you know, we put on a dominant display, I think, you know, he is such a lime, rot, a lime rock expert, if you will. I think you can safely say that he may have just put on a clinic here today. He absolutely did, leading his teammate by 9.2 seconds, 17 second lead over Tom O'Gorman and 21 seconds over fourth place. So just an absolute superb drive. Almost got the clean sweep here, four in a row, but able to get three out of the four here today. Here he comes, Elevan Goulart to the line. Mazda and SAC Racing doubles up in Turing Car A for your defending Turing Car A champion, Elvin Goular. Yeah, three of four. Not too bad that he's contested here this weekend. Just a superb run. And here is Kanan O'Connell. And Kanan's got a, that handy lead of 4.6 seconds over his teammate. And Kanan just has to hit his marks and bring it home. And uh, it's going to be a big day for this young man as well. Of course, the Bondurant driving school there for Kanan O'Connell. His teammate... P.J. Gronke right there behind him. So it's going to be, looks like uh, yeah. if it holds together here for about three more corners, <laughs> it'll be a Tech Sport Racing 1-2 in TCB. Kevin Anderson make him a little happy and see that. But there is O'Connell and P.J. Gronke still fighting for that worst win for P.J. It's coming, buddy, but awesome, superb drive here for both of those Tech Sport Chevy Sonics. Well, I'll tell you what, they started 1-2 in this one in the order, O'Connell over Gronke. That's how they're going to finish. Barring anything untoward happen on the downhill. And Kanan O'Connell in the Chevy Sonic is going to come home with a win here in uh, Lime Rock Park. There's P.J. Gronke with another second. And a uh, very impressive run there as well. So Goulart over fast knot. O'Gorman did hang on to third. And O'Connell and Gronke win with Taylor Handwork in third. We're going to pause. When we come back to Lime Rock Park, we'll hear from our winners. Stay with us. finish that segment here yeah, for CBS exactly. Sports back on our live web stream at motorshinondemand.com and world-challenge.com. We'll get some interviews here with our drivers. Welcome back, everybody, to Lime Rock Park as our Touring Car A and Touring Car B field, the majority of them making their way into pit lane after hard-earned and well-deserved cool-down laps and for a couple victory laps. And for this guy, once again, Elevan Goulart climbing out of this uh, global Mazda MX-5 Cup car for SAC Racing for the third time this weekend. It is a victory lap celebration and a third visit with Kurt Hansen. <laughs> we need to get you a quick release Stilo helmet so you can get these things off faster. Oh my goodness. Uh, not quite the uh, the side by side door banger it was earlier today, but three for I'm four. Okay <laughs> you're okay with that. Three for four this weekend, and you're okay with no more door, door banging. Yeah, no, no, that was very unfortunate. You know, kind of ruined uh, what could have been a perfect weekend, but, um, you know, things happen at times. I don't think anything was intentional on anybody's part. 
but uh, we're here now. Uh, get a clean sweep of the TCA, which is fantastic. Great for points. The SEC crew, my dad, the whole family's here, so it's great to have everybody out. Uh, Mazda, great little car, just a flying around today. It's pretty hooked up. Uh, the Drivers Club over here, uh, Sports Car Driving Association. Thank you for everyone that came out. And uh, phenomenal drive by Matt Fastnet right there. Uh, we got a little bit hung up in traffic. Oh, man, nice job. Good job. Nice job. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Congratulations once again. You know what? Not a bad day. A sweep of the top two positions for the team. Oh, Goulart gets his third win. Fastnet gets another fast lap. It says a lot about how this team executes as we take a look at our results, Jeff. Yeah, not a bad not a bad run there for Mazda as well as you see that. Eight of the top ten positions in TCA with Foss not finishing in second. Tomo Gorman. Tomo, a good recovery for him getting in third, finishing tenth earlier today. Eric Powell in fourth. The smoke stayed. Able to keep that in the car. Dean Copeland to fifth. Brian Henderson sixth. Richard Astachio in seventh. So it's great runs there by all that as we go down to Daniel Moan, Streamer, and Anderson completing your top ten. And with that, let's get back down to Kurt, who's standing by with our Touring Car B winner, Kanan O'Connell. Podium earlier, uh, now the top of the podium. Uh, this is going to be a regular deal. <laughs> you, you know what? Like, I have the joke, and I can't throw the football from like here to that like track, but I, something makes sense to me. <laughs> that uh, uh, just kind of dominance. You just kind of drove away and just kind of worked your race. Yeah, you know, it was. Uh, you know, I, I didn't get a good start. You know, you know, my teammate PJ got a great start and got around me, and then you know it started to uh, just kind of fall towards the back. And uh, it's kind of one of those deals where that where that chess game mentality comes back in and just, uh, you know, got lucky with some, some faster traffic and, uh, and, and made it happen. Just good race crap. We'll see you in Victory Circle. Absolutely. Thank All you, guys. Right. Thank Congratulations. You. Yeah, it's a very good comment by Kurt. Racecraft. And uh, he's got a pretty good instructor that he spent a lot of time with, a lifetime, really, uh, with his instructor. And uh, uh, that can't hurt. Bob, Bob Underout Racing School on the side? Exactly. But Dad, Johnny O'Connell, and you yeah. see the other side of Johnny O'Connell back there is <laughs> – I think that's sort of what we've had here at Lime Rock for the last couple of days, but having some fun here as they conclude all the racing here in the Pearly World Challenge here at Lime Rock Park, and uh, just a blast. Yep, and they actually, because of the, the lakes nearby here and uh, some of the runoff area, they have those boats staged just in case. Uh, they think of everything here, Skip Barber and his gang does, and look at that shot. Just the setting here is stunning. And uh, so lucky for us to be able to come here once again uh, on behalf of the Pearly World Challenge. As we wrap up our coverage here on our global webcast, I'd just like to say that I think it's a real honor for that Pearly World Challenge was able to kick off the Road to 60 celebrations that start officially. The official anniversary is in June, but to be able to start off this Road to 60 celebration season for Pirelli World Challenge to be involved in it at this legendary facility, an absolute honor. Jeff, thanks so much for another great weekend of racing. And, of course, uh, Calvin Fish uh, sitting in and uh, working with us here for the Sprint X and the GTS coverage. It's, uh, it's been great. Bit of a break now for the touring cars until August when we go to the Utah Motorsports Campus just outside of Salt Lake City. But for Sprint X, Jeff, and for GTS, short break to another amazing racetrack, Road America. Yeah, how about that? America's Nürburgring, as Peter Cunningham would call it, at Road America. So look for that, and we go back to the sprint format, single yep. driver, 50-minute sprint races for those GT3 machines. Always exciting. You can always catch all the action right here at MotorTurnOnDemand.com and World-Challenge.com. Thank you so much for coming out. We'll see you guys again at Road America three weeks' time.